in our starter project we have a world script and it is on this world game object and this script uses the remaining scripts to generate our world when we press start and then we click regenerate uh, button and this creates our landscape now we can change the settings in the world game object we have the map size in chunks let's set it to be like uh, 20 and let's regenerate it and it will take some time because it is running on the main thread but at some point it will generate us a new world that contains 20 chunks so each chunk is a one of the pieces that our map is made out of okay we are going to focus on making our world generate a better looking landscape so currently in our world script if we open it up oh okay now if you recall world script contains some data that uh, you, we use to generate our world but also it contains the dictionaries that has the references to the chunk data that contains the data behind our uh, voxel world and chunk render which are the actual visible parts of our world now we have this generate world method that performs multiple tasks first of all it destroys the previously created chunks if we have any next is actually fills in the voxel data the chunk data with the voxel data so we have this generate voxels method that uses some sort of an algorithm to use perly noise to generate the different types of blocks in each voxel space so that we have this different uh, landscape we have water we have sand we have dirt now is the, beside this we of course render our chunks using the chunk data we create chunk render and render our objects in our unity world now before we start refactoring this code and extracting some of those methods some of those uh, lines of code to separate scripts i would like to focus on the main mechanic that we want to implement so our procedural generation so basically when we get our chunk data we instead of calling here the generate voxels and having this algorithm here in this world script i would like to have it in a separate script so let's go back to unity okay and i would like to create two new scripts in our underscore scripts folder i would like to right click create a new c sharp script and first script will be called terrain generator okay and i will have another script here so let's right click create new c sharp script and let's call it biome generator okay so the idea here here is that we are going to call this terrain generator and this terrain generator will select the specific biome and use this biome generator for the specific biome to generate our landscape now for uh, the first few videos we are going to only have one biome so let's go back to our world script and as i have mentioned i want to extract this generate voxels method so let's slide up to our generate world method and here where we have called this generate voxels and we have passed here the data we are going to comment this code out and instead first of all at the top of this class we are going to create a new public uh, field this will be the train generator and this will be called train generator we are going to have the reference to it here and here where we have commented out the generate voxels we're going to create chunk data new data it will be equal to terrain generator and we do not have any methods here but we are going to create one and this one will be called generate chunk data okay and we are going to pass here our data next we are going to also want to have here a vector 2 int which will be the offset of our map so that we can apply some offset and we have this we can have this uh, concept of a seed so we are going to go up we are going to create a public vector to int and we are going to call it map seed offset and this will be it and we are going to pass it inside our generate chunk data new method so map seed offset 
and those will be two parameters that we want to pass to our uh, method now what we will also want to do is take this new data and pass it to our dictionary chunk data dictionary instead of passing the data we're going to pass this new data and this is just because when we go to our multi-threaded code we always want only a single thread to process our data so we want to return this data here and then we want to add it to our dictionary now since we do not have this method we're going to right click and we are going to use quick actions menu and we can use generate method inside our terrain generator right now this method is empty but as i have said we are going to want to move this generate voxels method so instead we are going to copy the in, uh, the content of this method and we are going to use ctrl x or cut it out from this script i'm going to save this script ctrl s and i'm going to slide up where we have this new method called since it is empty we are going to right click on it and we can select go to the definition in visual studio so we have this script opened uh, this uh, terrain generator and this new method here defined now before we can fill this method i'm going to delete the update and start methods since we are not going to need them right now and i'm going to create a public field and this will be our biome generator and i have misspelled the name of it so i'm going to call it biome generator okay and i can right click rename and i'm going to call it biome generator spelled correctly okay now just for safety i will change the encapsulation from internal to public and now we want to fill in this generate chunk data method and let's paste the code that we have copied lately and here we're going to leave those two for loops that loop through x and y values since those are all the x and y positions of our chunk from our chunk data and i'm going to cut the inner part of this for loops so all the calculations here since those will be put in the those will be uh, in the biome generator script so now we have looped through x and y positions and this is because for each x and y position we need to generate a separate noise value using our perly noise function now for the processing part of each voxel we are going to use our biome generator we're going to call our biome generator dot process column and uh, let's call it process chunk column okay and we are going to pass to it our data so our chunk data we are going to pass to it x value and we are going to pass to it z value and we will probably modify this method later on but right now this is it and i will also want this to return our data so what we can do is we can reuse this data this chunk data that we have here so let's write in front of this call of this method data equals and we are going to return this chunk data from our process chunk column and we want to return this data as a result of our generate chunk data of our terrain generator script now overall for safety we would like to have this chunk data to be immutable and to return a new copy of it just for the safety of the multi-threaded code and right now let's not worry about it and we have this data returned from our biome generator since we do not have this method let's right click on it and let's reuse our quick actions menu to generate this method so we do not have to write the additional code again since this has uh, this is an empty method let's right click on it and let's go to the definition of it okay we are inside our biome generator class and i'm going to delete the start and update methods since we do not need those i'm going to change the definition of it to be public this method that we have created and we have our chunk data int x and int z values passed to it now we have copied the code in the from the, our terrain generator that we have deleted from our um, generate chunk data method so we should have this code here this is the part that we have uh, cut out from our world script and this generates us a noise value and this uh, gives us the ground position and then we are going to look for each y value and place the concrete uh, value for the uh, block type inside our chunk data now we are missing few parameters so let's go to our world 
and let's delete those from here just to make the world do less things that it is already doing so i believe that we will need the water threshold and the noise scale for sure so let's cut out those from our world script let's save the world script let's go to our biome generator to the top of it and let's paste those two values and of course we are missing the chunk height now we do not actually need to paste anything here because our chunk data already contains this parameter so we can type data dot chunk height this data knows all about the chunk that it wants to generate so i have modified this int ground position equals math f dot round uh, to integer and noise value times data dot chunk data and inside this for loop this is still complaining because we are not returning this data after processing so that's what we will need to do we will need to slide down and return our data so now we haven't actually changed anything inside our generation algorithm beside adding this code uh, encapsulating this code inside our biome generator and encapsulating some additional code in our terrain generator so our terrain generator should work as it worked before so make sure that you save all the scripts file and we should have save all and now we can go back to unity okay you might see some warnings that some parameters are not yet used that's perfectly all right so what we will need to do here is we are going to create a new object in our hierarchy let's select create empty and we are going to call it terrain generator okay and we will want to reset the transform so let's select reset and inside this terrain generator we are going to create a new game object create empty and we are going to call it biome generator okay later on we are going to have multiple biomes but let's now focus on making our code work again so what we want to do is we want to add to our biome generator the biome generator script that we have created and we want to add to our terrain generator the terrain generator script that we have created and let's assign our biome generator uh, as a parameter of the terrain generator one thing that we can change is in our biome generator let's change the water level to be something like 38 and i believe the noise scale should be 1 0.01 .01 to give us a nice effect and now we should have in our world script we can drag it to be near the terrain generator a place to add our terrain generator now i have forgotten to add the map seed offset to affect our generation but now we should be able to press play and we should be able to press our regenerate button and our world should be generated again but now we have encapsulated the part of the code inside our the biome generator so it will be much easier for us to modify our procedural generation script without modifying the world script so let's stop playing let's go back to our biome generator script and make sure that we can pass beside the int x and int z values that we can pass our vector to int map seed offset and all what we can do is simply add to our uh, math f dot noise calculation our map seed offset so before we add the data world position dot x we can add map seed offset control space to fill in uh, to use auto complete to fill in the name dot x plus and we can copy this part and paste it when we calculate the z value but instead change it to be i think y this time because this is a vector to in so it has y and uh, x and y to calculate the z position now all we need to do is pass to our press uh, process column chunk the map seed offset so what we can do is right click on it and select find all references in visual studio it should show you all the places where we call this method if we click on it we are going to go back to our terrain generator so let's pass at the end our map seed offset and let's make sure that we save all the scripts by clicking file and save all and now we can go back to unity okay and now we should be able to press play and click regenerate it should generate as the same area now if we select our world and change the parameters for example let's change the x by 10 and let's regenerate it and we should see that our terrain is starting to move let's do the same on y let's say 20 
and we can see that now our pool of water has been moved so basically if we pass to somebody those seed values so those x and y coordinates they can generate exactly the same map that you have because we are using the Perlin noise instead of a random number generator so in the next video we are going to implement a way to generate a more interesting looking map we are going to work on our custom uh, noise generation function so that we can generate our multi-octave Perlin noise. Okay, see you in the next video.